Grand Am Auto and today we're going to be looking at our Pontiac Grand Am. Um, you might remember this car, we picked it up in Huddersfield a few months back. We've done loads of work to the car. Check the MOT out, you will see probably at least half of it on there. Um, what we've noticed since then is that the clutch is slipping. So 60, 70 quid landed after a few days from the States and we're going to put in a brand new clutch kit. Not an engine we know that well. Um, it's a 2.3 four-cylinder GM engine. Never dropped a transmission on it. Um, it should be simple, but there's 32 years worth of rust and bolts on there. So let's see what happens. So we're going into the second day on the clutch on this. We've sort of taken a real slowly, slowly, softly, softly, gently, gently approach to it all. And it's basically soaking every single bolt, um, teasing it out. Uh, you find no zip guns being used here, it's all by hand. Um, obviously we've got this leg off and the transmission up here. We've got a couple more bolts to come out here on this part of the subframe. What is a split subframe has been removed here. So far, not a single bolt, not a single rounded nut. A few more bolts around the transmission and we'll be dropping it. But I'd hazard a guess that we're gonna see a GM clutch plate coming out of uh, this car. It's not been undone, I don't think. Clutch is in and um, we're going off on its sort of first test drive. Um, it, to be fair, it feels a, a bit of a different car all round. Definitely an experience doing that clutch. I don't think it's one that um, our mechanics would necessarily rebel doing again. Um, but what can I say about this car? I thought I'd take the opportunity to just uh, give this a little bit of a test run out and explain what it's about really. It's not, as you know, an engine that we see a lot of. Um, it's got a lot of power, a lot of punch straight off the mark. It gives the illusion that it's it's uh, a lot more powerful than it actually is. In fact, it's only really a 140 odd brake horsepower engine, which is enough, don't get me wrong, um, but it gives you a lot of immediate power, which is, which is great. Um, the thing with American cars, what we all tend to get quite hung up on is the V8 the big cubic inch V8 cars, um, you know, we, we want the 5 litre Fords and the 5.7 Hemis and, and, and 5.7 Chevy small blocks and that kind of thing. And actually, some of these four-cylinder engines, this particular four-cylinder engine is something a bit different. It's not something we, uh, we get to see too often. And let's face it, if I had a late 80s Ford in the UK and I was telling you it had a 2.3 engine, that would be something a bit exciting to talk about. Um, and you can feel that, it is something different. This was GM's first American built four cylinder engine. Uh, they've been borrowing engines from Cosworth in the UK. They decided to make their own um, and they came up with the quad four engine, the dual overhead cams. And you know what? It's a decent little engine. There's a simplicity to it. Thank you. 